Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And praise God. We are here together for another Life in Christ in the National Church Midweek Bible Study. And we thank God for it. We are celebrating homegoing uh, services this week. We got word last week that we lost our dear Pastor uh, Palabrica and we're, we're lifting him and his family up, his family up and his son and, and his wife and the church congregation there in Mindanao Island, uh, Kitapawan City in prayers. And um, pray for my family. We, we, I lost a, a, a cousin um, on Saturday as well. So we are um, lifting up our families. We're lifting up our, 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 our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a time of transition this is a time where uh, the Lord is is drawing us nigh unto him to hear um, his guidance and hear his direction and I'm grateful to God on tonight that he has allowed us for this month of September to focus to set our focus on what the Bible teaches us what God's Word teaches us about glory and so tonight we're continuing in that uh, uh, vein of study tonight our focus and, and and our study specifically for tonight is going to be glory through Christ and and we know as baptized Christian believers that when we retire from this world we go from life to life we go from glory to glory and so we honor and praise God for that gift and so tonight, just for a moment, we're going to get a glimpse, a glimpse in and through God's word on what the Bible teaches us about glory through Christ. The scripture reading that we're going to cover tonight is another very familiar passage of scripture. But of course, I try to encourage every opportunity that we not get caught up in the 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 awe and the wonderment that 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 the divine revelation and and the divine insight that that the Lord provides for us as as we revisit um, mighty and supernatural accounts of Scripture. But what we're re reaching for, and 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 what we're what we're praying and asking God for is that what we read in the Word, that we have a divine witness in our souls. In, in our minds and in our hearts for what we're reading in God's Word. And so it's not just recounting the Scripture, but by grace and by the blood of Jesus, we are actually bearing witness. We're living epistles of God's divine Word. And we thank God for that tonight. With that being said, let us go ahead and open up this midweek Bible study with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, tonight for our midweek Bible study. We thank you, Lord God, for night tonight for being able to take time to come and fellowship in your word and read in your word and glean and learn, Lord God, as much as we can what your Bible teaches us about glory. And tonight, specifically, glory through Christ. What a gift. What 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 a divine, all seeing, all knowing, all powerful God. That he would lead us to this place. That he would provide such an opportunity for us. This dying and hurting and lost world. And for that, Lord God, we thank you for it, Lord. Father, we invite you into our midweek Bible study worship. And Father, we ask that you go before us. We ask that you would be with us. May your anointing rest upon the study, Lord. And let us not only read in your word, oh dear God, and glean from your word, oh dear God, and a, a, a grasp the insight, the divine insight. But oh dear God, bless our souls to walk in it. Bless our souls, oh dear God, to live it. And all of the, the, these things we bring before you now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So we already know tonight 
that our midweek Bible study is going to be about glory through Christ. Tonight, specifically, we'll be reading our scripture and studying from the Gospel of Matthew, the 17th chapter. This study on tonight is only going to cover verses 1 through 8. So our scripture reading, for the most part, is, is a short read. But I believe the divine insight that's, that's captured for us tonight in and through God's word leads us to um, a better place, um, a better positioning to embrace what God is ministering to us tonight about glory through Christ. And, and I want to make sure that um, our hearts and our minds are prepared that, that even as we read God's word and even as we, we, we dive into the scripture reading on tonight, I believe that the Lord is working in us and through us and by us and for us for full divine manifestation of glory through Christ. And what that means is that our life is purposed for something greater. Our life is purposed to be a beacon of light to a dying world, to, to be what, 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 what is called a, a, a um, anchor for someone else, an encouragement, a smile, a prayer. And so we're, we're striving to meet that goal. We're striving to accomplish and become all that God has predestined for our lives. And so tonight, the Lord leads us to continue in our study. And, and tonight we're thankful to God that, that we can take time in his word and, and glean and learn as much as we can about what God's word teaches us about glory. We already know that all month long, the Lord has led us to search out his word and, and we've encountered Moses um, we've, we've encountered Ezekiel, we've, we've encountered the prophet Elijah, and how God revealed his glory in a still small voice, or, or as the Amplified Bible uh, uh, shares with us, a gentle blowing sound. And so, and of course, we know some say um, a, a whisper um, um, is, is, is what, what uh, and how the Lord revealed himself uh, to Elijah in Scripture. And so tonight, the Lord is continuing to lead us in and through his glory. Tonight, we, we encounter, and, and not only encounter, but we also, if we allow the Lord, we also experience God's glory through Christ Jesus. As we read in the scripture about the Mount of Tribulation, uh, tri uh, excuse me, I'm tongue twisted, tongue tied on tonight. But as we read and glean about the Mount of Transfiguration, so we already know the title of this midweek Bible study is Glory Through Christ Jesus. We already know that we're reading from the account of Scripture in the Gospel of Matthew, the, the 17th chapter. And that we'll be reading and gleaning from the Transfiguration, Scripture that teaches us and introduces us to the Transfiguration. Very, very rich scripture very very rich account of scripture and and so as we approach this this familiar passage of scripture our focus tonight is not only recounting uh, uh this extraordinary and and amazing account of scripture but as i already said we're looking we we are yearning to possess all that Christ Jesus has for our lives, all that Christ Jesus has for our ministries and for our families and for our churches and for our businesses and everything else. And so tonight, we want to be encouraged to set our focus on glory through Christ Jesus. And the way that our, our, our midweek Bible study is, is worded, glory through Christ Jesus. It may be a tongue twister, but the, the, the essence of what the Lord is ministering to us tonight is not that, just, that we just read it in God's word, but that we have a full and complete manifestation of God's glory in our lives. And that leads me to say that it is imperative we understand 
and and are enabled to grasp not only grasp but also receive the concept and full essence of Christ the the, the account in scripture is about God and it's about God's only begotten son Matthew 17 what we're about to read and and in the process in Matthew 17 a portion of God's true nature is revealed and it is captured in scripture and and in the amplified Bible it's called heavenly glory and so we're going to read that account of scripture and tonight we're going to dig into search in um, that 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 account of scripture on tonight and so I want to make sure we keep our focus and, and I say that because we can become caught up or, or are struck by, by, by God's heavenly glory. And, and the scripture identifies it in the Amplified Bible as clear and bright like the sun. The scripture shares with us that, that there's a dramatic change in appearance. The, the scripture says that the clothing is white as a light. The scripture also shares that, that Jesus encounter with Moses and Elijah um, and that there was even a bright cloud that overshadowed them the disciples and so when when we go into the details of, of this account of scripture again it is easy for us to become awestruck and and be overwhelmed and caught up in the awe and wonderment and amazement of the, the heavenly glory of God but I want us to keep our focus. I want us to, to, to maintain our, our, our course that God has set for us tonight in this midweek Bible study. And that is to walk away possessing and embracing the full manifestation of glory through Christ Jesus. And so we are to be encouraged to, to look beyond. The, the physical manifestation and and to look and, and and set our focus solely on the transfiguration of our souls the transfiguration that comes when we encounter the divine presence of God and so tonight we're reading as we already know in the gospel of Matthew the 17th chapter it's important, and, and I can't say it enough, that we glean and also understand that, that this transfiguration, this, this glory through Christ Jesus occurred after Jesus began to foretell of his death on the cross. After uh, Jesus had, had just taught his disciples that discipleship is costly. So, so, so I'm compelled to make it plain, uh, I'm, I'm compelled to make it clear as possible that, that we're not after the glory alone, but after the glory cloud leaves us, after the physical manifestation dissipates, where are we with God? Are we left chasing the experience? Are we filled and charged to fulfill God's divine will and divine purpose. I cannot answer that for you on tonight, but I can point you in the right direction. That choice has to be made by you. And so again, we're reading in the Gospel of Matthew, the 17th chapter, starting at the first verse. And tonight we're charged to be quiet and, and, and to quiet ourselves and, and to find that place in God where we're filled and charged to fulfill God's divine will, God's divine plan, and God's divine destiny for our lives. There's layers upon layers in, in the reading of, 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 of these verses. And, and we already know and we, we already understand that we're studying from the Amplified Translation. And, and the Amplified Bible um, is, is, is wordy. So, so it makes sure that we have a full grasp of, of what the scripture is ministering to us um, 
in the scriptures. And so the, so that's important to make sure that, that we, we get it, that we understand it, that we glean what the Lord is teaching on tonight. This midweek Bible study is about glory through Christ Jesus. And as we look at the account of scripture in the gospel of Matthew, we are to find our place in God, not just his glory or the sensation of his glory or the sensation of being in the presence of God. But we're charged on to a higher calling. We're charged on to find and to possess and to live out God's divine glory, God's divine will and purpose in our lives. So again, tonight we're reading in the gospel of Matthew, the 17th chapter. We're going to be starting at the first verse. Tonight we're only reading a few verses. We're going to end our midweek Bible study tonight at verse 8. But we're walking away much richer. We're walking away with much more divine insight about glory through Christ Jesus. So with that being said, let us go ahead and get right into the reading of God's word. Again, it's a short read, but the divine essence of what's captured is of grave importance. And it's up to us to get it, to grasp it, to embrace it, and to walk in it. Matthew 17 chapter 17 starting at verse 1 and verse 1 reads for us on tonight out of the amplified bible six days later jesus took with him peter and james and john the brother of james and led them up on a high mountain by themselves verse 2 and his appearance changed dramatically in their presence and his face shone with heavenly glory, clear and bright like the sun. And his clothing became as white as light. Verse 3, And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with Jesus. Wow. So impactful. So, so, so rich and and divine and insightful these kinds of things or, or this kind of encounter and, and interaction with God's holy son can only happen here it cannot happen anywhere else any other religion any other faith and that's because the shed blood of Jesus Christ grants us full and complete access to the glory and full manifestation of God. The same glory that uh, I, I preached about on Sunday that, that John 17 tells us, and we'll get to that, that John 17 tells us that the Lord prayed and the Lord has given us his glory and his honor so that we may be one with him. And so when we encounter God's word tonight, when, when we embrace all that it entails, we see and we also experience, if you dare to experience the manifestation of God's presence, glory through Christ Jesus. There, there's a number of, of insights that, that, that present themselves in just these few verses. The first insight is, is what happens and, and how it happens when we come into the divine manifestation of glory through Christ Jesus. God doesn't showboat or, or, or try to, to, to put on a show. And hear me, hear me, hear me. This is talking about intimacy with God. This is talking about one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord, um, um, private time with God. Um, we see, as we look at this account of scripture, that those that are close to him, in, in the scripture, it's Peter, it's James and it's, and, and James and it's John, who went with Christ, and, and, and Christ led them up on a high mountain by themselves, so it's just them and the Lord. And, and I'd like to believe 
it was private it was it was what we call invitation only it was it was those who were willing to be led up a high mountain by themselves by Christ alone and so what that means is sometimes when the Lord is needing to do something or having to do something it's not done in huge and big and large crowds it's just you and him or it's just a select few and so that's something to hold on to I, I, I don't want us to miss the details that God's word is unfolding for us tonight I don't want us to miss this divine insight. And, and, and most important, we should be encouraged to, to find ourselves in God on tonight. As, as, as God reveals to us through his word and in his word, glory through Christ Jesus. So, so as we read in God's word, there, there are aspects that, that, that should be noted. There, there are aspects that, that we should pay close attention to. We, we, we have to, and, 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 and this, I mean, maybe this is um, restating the obvious, but, but we have to have a relationship. We, we have to have a walk with Christ Jesus. We, we, we have to emphatically know and, and, and trust and believe who he is. So much so that we are willing and, and yielding enough to allow him to lead us up a high mountain by ourselves. And so the prayer is that we get it tonight, that the prayer is that this is indeed made plain, tangible, real. I see it. As, as, as not difficult. I, I see it as, as not complicated. When it's in and through glory, through Christ Jesus. It's, it's, and I think I said this before, it's like putting your hand in the master's hand and letting him do all it is that he's that pleases him, that, that he's designed and purposed to do for our souls. We're part of the big picture and, and he's revealing it to us if we allow it. The scripture tells us that Christ Jesus led his disciples up a high mountain and, and that Christ Jesus' appearance changed dramatically in the presence of his disciples. It, it says that Christ's face shone with heavenly glory, clear and bright like the sun. And, and his clothing became as white as light. That's something to hold on to. That's something to fully and completely embrace. Don't let it escape your mind, your heart, and your soul. It's important that we're able to capture that it's important that we're able to embrace that and hold on to that we have to digest the word of god we have to be encouraged to fully embrace the word of god understanding and and believing and knowing and trusting that it's not far from us The scripture then continues and, and, and it tells us that, that Moses, a major prophet, a major, major man of God, a major staple in our Christian belief and Christian faith. And the prophet Elijah, another major man of God, another major staple in our Christian faith, appeared to the disciples that were led and brought up a high mountain by Christ Jesus. And they were talking with Jesus. This is so divine. This is so impactful. And again, it's only through glory through Christ Jesus. Hmm. 
you know, you when you watch TV, and I don't want to digress, but when you watch TV, and and you have people, um, God forbid, that are that are playing the, the lottery and and pick fours and all of this other stuff. <laughs> when you watch the commercial, the commercial tell you you got to be in it to win it. So when we look at the details of God's word. When we look at the details of, of, of our walk and our call for an almighty, holy, and righteous God, it's imperative that we know we have to be in it to win it. And so the, the way the Lord leads us tonight in, in his word, the, the way the Lord reveals to us tonight glory through Christ Jesus it it's to me it's it's mind blowing it's 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 one of those things that that cause you to 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 hold your head because it's so fervently rich so so here in God's word God shows us that not only were the, the disciples graced to to be led up a high mountain by Christ Jesus but but Christ's appearance changed drastically in their presence they, they, they got to see, they, they got to witness and experience Christ's transfiguration right before their very eyes. Glory through Christ Jesus. Not only that, but also Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with Jesus. So, so, so to, to slow down just a bit, it's important tonight that we grasp what's all entailed in these details. It's important we understand and also that, that this is very much a part of who we are in Christ Jesus and what we possess in and through Christ Jesus. I already mentioned that that in the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter, Christ prayed. And, and, and in John 17, he declares that he has given us his glory and honor. Let's read that, John 17. We're reading out of the Amplified Bible. And the scripture says, I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one just as we are one that is so divinely rich it's 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 treasure upon treasure and and so i, I want to make sure we grasp what god has placed in our hands in our lives in our souls when we come to christ it, it may take us, and, 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 and I'm being serious about this because the scripture says the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one who endures. And, and so it may take us some time to mature. It may take us some time and I'll walk um, in destiny, but, but nothing stops God from being God. Nothing stops God's divine will and God's divine plan. It may take us some time to catch up, but God is still God. The scripture says, and, and I'm reminded of this verse, he changeth not. Malachi 3, 6, and I'm going to read that out of the Amplified Bible. It says, for I am the Lord. I do not change, but remain faithful to my covenant with you. That is why you. Those sons of Jacob have not come to an end. When the Lord is, is, is ministering about glory through Christ Jesus, it's imperative that we understand that that means there is no limit. Even though we may in our, our carnality be limited, that doesn't in any way at all, shape, form, or fashion, limit the essence, the full manifestation of God. And I pray that we get it on tonight. We get it so much that we become it. We get it so much that we walk in it. We possess it. 
That's what God is calling for us to do. And it's not just about us, but who has God called your life to reach? It may be on an airplane. It may be in the grocery store, in, in, a, in a park. By, by the grace of God, this, this past Sunday, we, we celebrated our, our prayer outreach. And, and the young souls that, that, that participated, the, the young souls that, 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 that attended and, and, and prayed, there are people that you won't meet maybe in the four walls of a church. And so to be able to provide a safe place of prayer, praying for careers and praying for destiny and praying for uh, the, the young men were single and praying for their future wives. All of those things are, are of divine essence and of great importance. Praying for the wholeness of God to be made manifest for those young men. And so tonight we're talking about glory through Christ Jesus. That 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 title is is loaded. It's loaded. Your, your struggles and your trials and the things that you're facing and the things that you've overcome and the things that you're, you're going through right now. Glory through Christ Jesus. You're going through it, but that's for somebody else's life. When we stop licking our wounds and come to embrace that and understand that and finish the assignment that the Lord Jesus has given us Take up our cross, because the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong. But we pray for God's divine, enduring power. And so, so tonight, I believe that as we reach to, to, to get a glimpse of, of glory through Christ Jesus, we are reminded and, and encouraged to be led by God. Because in order to get there, in order to, to, to finish this course, I believe we first have to have our own personal walk and relationship with God. Answering the question, what is our call? What has the Lord God predestined for our lives? And so with that, let us go ahead. We're going to continue in, in reading our word on tonight. We're going to allow the Lord to, to lead us in his word as, as captured in this account of scripture in the gospel of Matthew. Glory through Christ Jesus. See, see I believe what happens is that we, we often fail to understand and, and realize that that heavenly glory as, as, as this account of scripture captures for us clear and, and, and bright like the sun is only through Christ Jesus. But, but in order to embrace that, to, to, to possess that, we have to be led up a high mountain by the Lord Jesus himself. And, and, and so tonight, we already know that, that, our midweek Bible study is about glory through Christ Jesus. And, and as we continue in this account of scripture, even as, as we come to read our last set of verses, we're, we're, we're not just reaching for God's presence alone. We're, we're not just reaching just for, for, for God's glory. But we also want him to lead us to fully embrace every aspect of glory through Christ Jesus. So, so, so we are to be encouraged to, to hold and to reach for what the Lord is ministering to us tonight about glory through Christ Jesus. And so as, as we continue our reading and, and as we finish our scripture reading in the Gospel of Matthew, in this account of scripture, the Lord is 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 um the Lord is stretching us. The Lord is is allowing us to 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 reach on a greater level. 
the Lord is allowing us to 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 spread our wings just a little bit further and and embracing what the Lord is ministering to us about glory through Christ Jesus so again we're, we're finishing our, our scripture reading in the gospel of, of Matthew the 17th chapter and we're going to pick up our reading tonight at verse 4 Matthew the 17th chapter and the fourth verse reads for us on tonight then Peter began to speak and said to Jesus Lord it is good and delightful and auspicious that we're here. If you wish, I will put up three sacred tents here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Verse 5, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. A voice from the cloud said, this is my son let me let me get that straight a voice from the cloud said this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased and delighted listen to him verse 6 when the disciples heard it they fell on their faces and were terrified verse 7 but Jesus came and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. Verse 8, And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. I really, really love how God captures this account of scripture for us. It's, it's so intimate. It's so real. It's so tangible for us. And it also allows us to see what our flesh does and how our flesh responds. The Lord is teaching us his ways on tonight. The Lord is teaching us about himself on tonight. And and in our scripture reading, I believe we, we, we find and, and, and we get a glimpse of our own personal relationship with God. And 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 we also find it and get a glimpse of, of our own relationship with Jesus and, and and I wanna I wanna clarify that um just just for a second I want to say well when I say that we tonight the scripture I believe uh, allows us to find and also get a glimpse of our relationship with God and 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 with Jesus basically what I'm saying is our flesh cannot contain or match or our flesh has absolutely no place in the presence of God or in the presence of his beloved son. It, it gets in the way. That's all that means. It gets in the way. And, and I, don't, I don't want to simplify this divine encounter, but, but I think when we look at Peter's eagerness to, to, to do something good, um, as the scripture says, to, to, to do something delightful and, and auspicious or, or uh, as the, the, the dictionary says, conducive to success or, or favorable. We almost find that, as the scripture says, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Isaiah 64, verse 6, and I'm going to read that. For we all have become like one who is ceremonially unclean like a leper and all our deeds of righteousness are like filthy rags. We all wither and decay like a leaf and our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, like the wind takes us away, carrying us far from God's favor towards destruction. And, and so in order to, to capture what the Lord is revealing in and through his word on tonight is the divine revelation and the divine insight is that we are to be still and let the spirit guide and lead and let the Lord invite us into that next step in his divine presence in what, what, what our biblical translation tells us is heavenly glory. And, 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 and it's just that 
simple. Being led of the Lord. Led of the Lord up the hill, led of the Lord in his presence. There's no room or space for our flesh to entertain anything God. And, and so I had to, to, to revisit this divine insight. I, I want to, to make sure I capture the, the essence of what the Lord is ministering to us tonight about glory through Christ Jesus. See, see, it's very easy for us to get caught up. First, the, 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 there were, were, they were handpicked, the, the disciples were, were, were handpicked and, and, and they were graced to be led by Jesus up the mountain of transfiguration. And, and, and they were eyewitnesses to, to Christ's transfiguration. And then Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with Jesus. So, so in my carnality and in my way of thinking, why not get ahead um, and, 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 and be filled with awe and, and be filled with wonderment and zeal. I, I believe that's what happened with Peter. And, and the scripture says he began to speak and, and, and to offer to put up three sacred tents, for one for Moses and, and one for Elijah and, and one for Jesus. And, and when you look at, 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 at the way that, that God's word is, is opening up to us and revealing the, the fullness of his glory to us, one little divine insight and, and reminder is that the prophet, I lit, the prophet Elijah was great in the eyes of God. And, and the prophet of Moses was great in the eyes of God. But the only time the Lord declared and decreed, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased and delighted. Listen to him. There's divine order and there's divine clarification for us. Let's not get caught up in Moses. Let us not get caught up in Elijah. There shouldn't be three sacred tents. I believe that's what the Lord is opening up for us on tonight. I believe the clarity is, is, is provided for us. And so the divine presence of God causes us to understand that it's imperative we allow the Lord to lead. He, he knows that realm. It's, it's his nature. And, and because we are flesh and our flesh will trip us up every single time, it's imperative that, that we get it. And, and so here in our scripture, we, we, we see Peter thought to do good. He, he thought to, to be delightful and, and, and auspicious, as the scripture says. But, but it reveals to us plainly that that. When, you, when you're in what, what the Amplified Bible calls heavenly glory, when, when you're in glory through Christ Jesus, it's important that God maintains the lead at all costs. And, and so while Peter was speaking, the scripture says, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, in whom... I am well pleased and delighted. Listen to him. This, this, I believe, needs no explanation. It's, it's clear. It's, it's plain. God redirected immediately. I'm, I'm reminded of the scripture that says, No flesh will glory in the presence of God. 1 Corinthians 129. So that no one may be able to boast in the presence of God. Peter, Peter, I believe, with all of his might, thought he was doing the right thing. But not in the presence of God. There is a divine order of things. And I believe God, God magnifies this moment when, when he declares, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased and delighted. Listen to 
him. Even in this divine declaration, the, the, the disciples, they, they fell on their faces terrified. And, and the scripture says, and, and, I, and I want to capture, I believe immediately Christ came and, and, and touched them and said, get up and, and, and do not be afraid. And, and, and our study ends tonight reminding us um, as as a, as captured in scripture, when the disciples looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. Glory through Christ Jesus. We can't get ahead. We can't let our flesh trip us up. And, and so earlier when, when I mentioned that, this, this account of scripture allows us to, to, to find ourselves and, and see our relationship with God and see our, our relationship with Christ Jesus. So, so the Lord is, is redirecting and the Lord is, is demanding divine order. And, 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 and Jesus comes and he recognizes that we're just people of flesh. Like, you know, we thought we were doing good. Peter thought he was doing good. And the, and the scripture says, and then Jesus came and he touches them, giving them grace, I believe, and, and giving them mercy because they didn't know. They, they, they didn't know. They were just awestruck. They were just caught up in, in, in wonderment. And, and, and he encourages them. And he says, do not be afraid. And so our study tonight is about glory through Christ Jesus. And the divine insight, at least another divine insight, is that our last verse reminds us that when the disciples looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. How do we get in the presence of God? No one except Jesus himself alone. You'll see, and, and the scripture reminds us of it tonight our flesh will trip us up every time even though we think we're doing good our flesh will trip us up every single time so how do we glory through Christ Jesus it's very plain it's very simple we have to yield we have to submit completely to God and to God alone And so my hope and my prayer tonight is that we do grasp and we do gain the insight provided through God's word on tonight and that the revelation of, of being led of God and, and forsaking our flesh or, or the idea to do good in the divine presence of God uh, causes us to yield whole, wholly and fully and completely to God's divine order of things. That's the insight. That's that's the impact. That's how we hold on to and possess glory through Christ Jesus. And and tonight I'm so grateful to God. First that that we we serve a God that that has afforded us the, the privilege and and the opportunity to walk in and live in and embrace the glory and the honor in which Christ himself has given to us as baptized Christian believers. We, we have been entrusted with a glory through Christ Jesus. But the question tonight is, are we willing, are, are we yielded to be led by the Lord? And so tonight, be encouraged. Be encouraged that the Lord is leading you. Be encouraged tonight that God's divine will and God's divine purpose is that we as baptized Christian believers come into the full manifestation of glory through Christ Jesus. God doesn't want us to miss it, but he's, he's, he's encouraging us and nourish, uh, uh, nudging us on so that we fully embrace all that God has designed and predestined. And so may it remain in you. May, may the entirety of your life be in, engulfed by glory through Christ Jesus. Your, your call and your ministry. May, may, may you continue to reach and, and embrace and experience glory through Christ Jesus. That's my prayer tonight. And, and that this study 
just taking the time to, to, to search our scripture and, and read God's word, God, read God's word about glory through Christ Jesus, that, that it continues to bless you, that it continues to reach you right where you are in God. So tonight, by grace, we, we studied about glory through Christ Jesus. By grace, we, we were able to see the, the intricate details about experiencing and, and, and embracing and possessing glory through Christ Jesus. The account of scripture led us to see that God led his disciples up on a high mountain. Not a whole crowd of people, just a select few. And at the end, after all was said and done, when the disciples looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. Glory through Christ Jesus. You want to walk out your destiny, God. You want to walk out your calling, God. You want to walk out your divine purpose. You want to build your business. You want to, you want to, uh, whatever it is that the Lord is leading you to. God is affording us the divine insight on tonight to know and to trust and to understand that it's in and by and through glory through Christ Jesus. Hold on to that. Don't shake from that. Let the Lord continue to lead you and direct you and empower you to walk in the full glory through Christ. And so I pray and continue to pray that, that this, this, this insight, this message from God, this study from God, continue to reach you. It's important. God is, is, is calling us to, 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 to be the hands and feet of Jesus, who we see, what we touch, where we go. So be encouraged in the Lord on tonight. Amen, amen. That was our, our midweek Bible study, Glory Through Christ Jesus. Um, as always, I'd like to take just a few minutes to, to close out with our announcements. The Lord has blessed us. We had a full weekend. Um, we did our prayer outreach on Saturday. We did our, our end of month worship on our Sunday school hour. Um, and so we are finishing up the month of glory here at the church. Um, uh, next week will be our last midweek Bible study um, on 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 our topic glory, and then um, we'll go into a new uh, we'll go into a new focus. The Lord has has uh, provided a focus for us. Um, one one rich one of the rich rich experiences that that we encountered at at our, our prayer outreach. Everyone got um, an opportunity. To, and I'm not going to hold you too long. Everyone got an opportunity to what I call uh, declare and decree at the end of our, our prayer uh, prayer meeting. And there were words like loyalty. There were words like, like faith. There were words like um, prosperity. And the word that the Lord God has given me is goodness. And um, the Lord is really, really... Um, begin to uh, unfold that that the meaning of 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 that that declaration and and what I mean by that I'm not talking about things that are that are outside of me but the Lord has allowed me to revisit how he has showed himself the full manifestation of his goodness in my life and and so um so as we prepare to go into the month of October, um, that's what our focus is going to be. So, so the Lord is shifting us to that place of God's goodness. And so I'm excited about that. Um, so anyhow, um, as always, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we are going to have our Sunday school hour. And um, October 5th, we will have our youth ministry. They, they're, the kids are going to get together, and I think I've mentioned this already. They're going to have their little competition, and um, they're going to win their their Nintendo Switches and their Apple iPods and all those things. And then um, our end-of-month worship for the month of October will be on Sunday, October 17th. And so what that means, of course, we'll have our Sunday school hour at 10 a.m., and directly after, we'll go straight into our end-of-month worship. 
And of course, every Thursday evening at 7.30, Life in Christ International Church is here, and we are having our virtual online uh, midweek Bible study. I am blessed of the Lord. I am enriched of the Lord. I am grateful to God for his faithfulness, for his love and kindness and tender mercies, which are poured out upon us anew every morning. So I pray that this word, this this insight, this study, this time before the Lord enriches you and empowers you and encourages you to continue to press for the mark, for the prize of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close out with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God for our midweek Bible study. We thank you, Father, for being able to spend time in your word, to spend time with you and before you. Um, Lord, continue, Father, to let your glory be revealed. Continue, Father, to continue to shine upon, shine your light upon our souls in every area, in every place that we go to, every encounter, every person that we, we, we see or hear or touch. Continue to manifest yourself, O oh God, in our lives. Continue to keep us protected, oh dear God, covered by your blood, Lord God, on every hand and on every side, in every area and every circumstance. Continue to raise up your young people to be mighty warriors for you, Lord God. Continue to lead God and direct their lives and minister to their souls. Father, you said that their names are written in your hand and that not a one will be plucked out of your hand. And for that, oh dear God, we honor you on tonight and we thank you for it. Continue to have your way, oh dear God. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen, amen. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you for being a part of our midweek Bible study. I pray that something uh, was said or done. We'll see you next time. We'll see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Sunday school hour. God bless.